Hello students, in this video we'll see how to construct Brownian motion as the limit of a sequence of random walks. Let's consider a collection of identically distributed independent random variables x1 through xn where x1 is either 1 or negative 1 with probability a half and with probability a half. And we will take the interval 0, 1 and partition it into n steps. So partition 0, 1 into n subintervals of length 1 over n. We'll start our walk w0 at 0. Then we will look at w1 over n and what I will do is I will scale it so that we have x1 over the square root of n. We will define w2 over n to be w1 over n plus x2 over root n or x1 plus x2 over root n and recursively we will say that wj over n is wj minus 1 over n plus xj over root n which is x1 plus xj over root n. And finally we'll see that we note that w1 will be x1 plus xn over root n. And we can see that the central limit theorem implies that w1 converges, and w1 is really a function of n, so all these things have, have n dependence in them. w1 converges to a normal random variable with mean 0 and variance 1. So generically, generally, since wn of t can be written, crap, can I erase that idea? Ugh. Make your job harder today. Huh? Make your job harder. No, oh my god, I'm curious. <clears throat> w t is the square root of t times the sum j goes from 1 to nt of xj over the square root of nt. The central limit theorem implies that this will converge to a normal random variable with mean 0 and variance t. So we'll see that the limit of this sequence, so we will say that a process wt is Brownian motion we'll call it standard Brownian motion if wt is continuous in t with probability 1 and w of t plus s minus wt is independent of all the info in WL for L less than or equal to T and is N0S. 
no matter what t is, as long as the difference in the variables is s, the Brownian motion increment will be normally distributed with variance s. And so we can see that what's happening with Brownian motion is that if we have our time axis and our wt axis, is that it should look like a scaled version of a random walk. So if I zoom in on any version of Brownian motion, I should see an infinitesimal version of a random walk. We can also note that from this interpretation of Brownian motion, wt prime does not exist at any point. And this is a salient feature of Brownian motion is that while it's a rescaled version of a random walk with the appropriate scaling, we see that it will not be differentiable classically, yet the paths will be continuous. In further videos, we'll see how we can use Brownian motion to construct stock price changes over infinitesimal lengths of time. Thank you very much.